I'm working my way through some muddy and greasy trails to meet Steve and Sam. Everything is pretty wet and slippery as you're about to see on this hill. Okay, that deserves an instant replay just because it was so much fun. And it gets the little yellow Jeep symbol, which means it's actually uphill, even though everything seems flat in video. All right, that was fun. Now we have a giveaway that I want to talk about. Did you notice in the intro my new shifter? It's an Ellis Precision CNC machined aluminum shifter and I like it so much we are going to give one away. This is free from Ellis Precision. We are not sponsored, we get no compensation. This is a good old simple free giveaway. I will explain the details a little later in this video after we set up camp. Okay, now back to some fun in the mud. As you will see, I tried to get up this hill four times and I get stuck on a stump. All right, we got a little sideways going up this muddy hill. We're actually on top of a stump with the rock slider on the driver's side. So it's gonna be a winch situation. We're gonna get that set up now. It is a little muddy out here. Well, as you can see, the vehicle got a little sideways on the trail. The tires are caked in mud, and as I said, it took me four times to get to where I was. So uh, it's a simple matter to just winch up, so I opted to do that. As I'm getting set up, I want to talk about the topic of this video, which is five things we never go overlanding without. We decided to talk about not bumpers, not winches, not recovery gear, but instead things that make life on the road more enjoyable just the simple pleasures so we'll talk about that more when we get to camp okay time to winch here what's happening is you'll see the winch it's coming under load it's actually working fairly hard what's happening is it's pulling the vehicle right here where you see the blue arrow up over the stump so as we move around to the view from the front here comes the forerunner up and over the stump, and then we're off and running. So just so I know which is which, in, out. <laughs> I always push the wrong button. All right, finally I caught up with Steve and Sam and we are about to find, guess what, more mud. I'm about to laugh because I can see what Sam is in for. And it gets the yellow Jeep because it's steeper than it looks. <laughs> finally get ourselves out of the muddy area and we're working our way up and over these ridges and hills and what we're looking for is this outcropping it's this area it's got some really nice views a fire pit and is a great campsite unfortunately by the time we get there which you'll see we're gonna get uh, high winds that are gonna make us look for a lower elevation to ultimately camp in I can't even see it it's on your right. I'm glad I saw that because that would have been a big uh, rude awakening. Oh, I hit it, but I was going slow. As we start moving through this section of the trail, it gets thicker and thicker. Fortunately, Sam came prepared. I'm glad you brought that because, I mean, I looked at mine today and I thought, yeah, there's no way we're going to need a chainsaw. <laughs> 
Sam made quick work of that and we move on and I inadvertently end up testing my departure angle. How's my departure angle on the back? We're gonna find out. You're committed. You're gonna you're gonna hit the dirt. That tire's still on the ground. <laughs> I don't wanna tear the tire off. Okay, bumpers, bumpers in the ground. This tire's not touching anything, this back tire. This tire is in the air. It's the receiver hitch. Slow, slow. Slow. Okay, this is worth a replay just to watch Sam's facial expressions. First we get the cringe. Slow, slow. And we get the, oh. Slow. <laughs> I, I definitely would have done it. So we finally make it to this outcropping with the view and here's the fireplace. You see an arrow on the left, little fire pit there. Here's a better view of it. Perfect campsite, right? But as I said, high winds came up and we had to move. But take a look at the area. We put it on the map. Um, it's one we intend to go back to. It's an absolutely beautiful spot and would be perfect for a summer night camp out. So we headed down to a more sheltered location for camp, and here we are setting up. Comfort. <laughs> Fireplace is a work of art, Sammy. Porch lighter. That the wind just blew out. <laughs> Not supposed to do that. All right, so the Ellis Precision Giveaway. Really cool company. I wrote them, told them I bought one, how much I liked it, asked if they'd like to do a giveaway. They said absolutely. So a very cool company, and they will ship directly to you a shifter kit. This is for Forerunner, FJ Cruiser, Tacoma, or Tundra. You pick the color of the anodize you like. You can put the etching on it you like. For example, I actually put the logo for Overland Pacific Northwest. To qualify, all you've got to do is leave a comment that has the words Ellis Precision. Um, all the details are in the comments. We're going to do a drawing and announce the winner, and we'll announce the winner in our next video. Simple as that. No gimmicks, no Amazon affiliate links, no commissions, no compensation, just a fun giveaway. All right, we were going to talk about five fun things that we do not go overlanding without. First is a propane fire pit. With all the fires and fire restrictions now, this is kind of a must have for us. We take a five gallon propane tank and the smallest propane fire pit we can find. And this thing has been a godsend for um, just you know campfire time in the summers. Next is a battery powered or 12 volt powered inflator for your air mattress. This thing is a godsend. I used to do this with hand inflators and this is by far my favorite item ever. Next is a simple magnetic work light. These things are great for ambient light around camp. You can put them high on the vehicle or low on the vehicle, whatever you prefer. And it allows you to get in and out of the vehicle to get gear. We've tried a lot of different lighting solutions. You know, we've sat around with headlamps on, blinding each other while we talk. And these are just nice. You can put them on the tailgate. Uh, I like them down low on the vehicle like this at night because it's just some good ambient light allows you to move around camp, even with the campfire on. Next item is an aluminum workbench. These things are very light. They set up fast. I use them for a lot of different things. I use them as a staging station when I'm taking stuff in and out of the vehicle. If I need to hop up high onto the vehicle, I use them for that. I like to sit in front of the fire to cook. And speaking of cooking, here's Master Chef Steve. We've got bacon, got steak, 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 uh, rice baked potato, Montreal seasoning. Don't be afraid to lather this stuff up. Give it a little pat down. And the last item for today is a propane grill. This has become an all-time favorite of ours for cooking. We take a variety of different cooking solutions, but it seems like this ends up becoming a go-to from everything from warming burritos to cooking steaks. There's sometimes just nothing quite like a grill. Don't use olive oil, use bacon grease. On everything. It's like elk backstrap. I'll throw that in a little bacon, bacon grease. Bacon grease.
burritos, use bacon. <laughs> yeah, pretty much everything. <laughs> everything. Bacon. 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 Well, it does. You can't argue that that it uh, that it makes it better. Oh yeah. And this isn't part of our five things, but this is one of Sam's favorite things. He has a diesel heater, so he sleeps in the lap of luxury in his RTT. All right, we're heading back down the uh, fun, muddy hill on our way to one of our other favorite spots of all time. As is always the case, going down a really muddy hill is harder than going up a muddy hill. There's a little berm right behind my back tire there that helped me get going back up the hill right there in the right direction. That's like ice coming down. You hit that berm and that's what saved you. Sam almost slid right into that one. He's not an experienced driver like him. You're experienced in driving into trees, you mean? Yes, I am. Okay, that reference about driving into trees brings up the legendary crash involving a tree and Steve's forerunner, which can be seen in all of its gruesome detail in one of our earlier videos. Here it is. Okay, back to our trip. The one thing I noticed when I drive uphill, I lean forward in the seat. It doesn't do any good. <laughs> Everything about it doesn't give seats. you more traction. <laughs> That's it, I'm going for it! <laughs> We're finally out of the mud and we are heading to one of our all-time favorite places. Sam has a couple more trees to clear for us. But we're heading to a ridge line that we've marked on our maps for future campouts. And it's right above that lake and here's our vehicles. We're driving basically parallel along the ridge line and we'll get to a spot where we turn, we're gonna hang a right and go to a dispersed camping site. You can see the forerunners moving along the road and now we're going to arrive right here at the ridge at this amazing site. Here we are parked. There's a camp site and a fire pit right there. Good place to do some uh, solar panel charging of your devices if you haven't been doing that along the way. Now, every time I've been here, I have wanted to repel off this cliff. You Don't could be, just leave it as a backup. I like how you're leaning backwards, tightening the knot over the cliff. Yeah. <laughs> I'd go down Australian on that knot. <laughs> it's good. Know. That's yeah. what we in the biz call we'll you and Sam. the last knot. knot. Do you know why it's called the last knot? Because you're not going to tie another knot it after you like die. <laughs> using um, that knot. Real quick. Do uh, you have a will? Do you want to give us a verbal will real quick so I can <laughs> like 100% to Sam. 100% to Sam. <gasps> you heard that. We crashed with that on video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All my weapons to Sam. I'll take that. All my hunting rifles to Sam. And <clears throat> and all my tactical weapons to Steve. So oh, I feel minute. like he's got more tactical weapons than hunting weapons. Away we go. I I definitely would have done it. I know Steve would have done it because we've done some rappelling at Smith Rock together, but on this day we opted not to because as I got over the rim rock and looked down, I could tell it was fairly rotten there. And I have been with parties that have done rappels and had basketball sized rocks come crashing down. But just to prove the point, here's some footage of a rappel I've done off a similar cliff to get down to a fishing area. So. Next time I find a good line on that uh, canyon, we'll do the rappel and we'll get it on video for you. And this rappel and the fishing area I went down to are all covered in another video. I'll leave a link to it. And that was pretty much it, guys. We got the rigs packed up. We backed Steve's vehicle off the log. A good time was had by all. We headed out on some of those fun high desert roads. It's all good fun, guys. Thanks for watching.